Hello. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to use the 3D editor by Previewed. I will cover all the main features that the editor has and how you can utilize them to create 3D mockups and animations. On this screen, I've preloaded a mockup from the pre-made templates. I will provide the link in the description where you can see all the pre-made templates. And I will play the animation to show you what it looks like. The simplest way to edit this mockup is to simply replace the screen placeholders that already exist. For example, we can click on any device and edit the placeholders. In this video, I will cover you all the different functions of the 3D editor to make it simple for you to use it yourself. On In the top left corner, we have the menu. We have a device tab. The device tab simply allows us to add new devices. Currently, you can have iPhone iPad, MacBook, and Google Pixel devices. So if I want to add a new MacBook device, I simply click on the MacBook. And as you would expect, it's been added. I can uh, move it to any place that I want. For example, I want to put it in the bottom right corner. I can click on the menu, edit, toggle, rotate. It will give me a rotate rotation tool that will allow me to easily rotate and place the MacBook visually in the position and angle that I want. Um, it is device 4, and uh, if you do not want to use the visual rotate tool, you can simply use the rotation tool here um, by inputting the numbers, for example, if you know the coordinates that you want it to be in. Okay, let's delete the MacBook and go back to our animation. Um, the device adds the devices. Uh, you can add text to your mockups. Uh, the text is highlighted in the yellow color. We can have Let's move the timeline to see what kind of text appears. Um, and let's move it until the end to see all of the final versions of the texts. For text number one, it is pick a template. Text number two is customized. And text number three is the render, uh, the rendered text. OK, so if we click on the text layer, which is corresponding to the first pick a template text, we can customize its contents content. For example, we can change it from pick a template to say choose a template. And we can customize this color, we can customize the intro and outro animations by selecting something that suits our mockup, as well as its scale, alignment, fonts, and anything else that you expect to edit when working with text. The next tab is our image tab. We can wait for it to load custom images, which are currently store badges. For example, if you want the store badge to say, um, get it on Google Play, you can add it. And uh, the same goes for Apple. And then we can align them in our mockup. Um, all the elements appear in the timeline below, and they are fully customizable. Um, let's delete the image back, since we will not be using it. The next one is background. You can choose between solid background colors, so you can change the color to anything that you like. Let's make it purple. You can choose a linear one if you want to um, make it a little bit more fancy. Uh, let's go for purple. Um, I like this blue, it stands out. Or you can pick an image one, which usually means uh, if you want a custom gradient or a blur landscape or something else, uh, you can pick these already existing um, images as your background. Set them, set them to be your background. Uh, let's. I uh, usually go for gradients. They are quite nice. Let's pick this one at random, and um, I think we're good to go with it. Okay. Um, let me go back to the animation. Now that we've covered all of the main. Uh, tabs. Uh, let's cover the last one. It is plane. Plane is, uh, as you'd expect, a plane in 3D space, and it allows us to uh, add shadows. So you can see there's a plane right here at the bottom, and above it um, are floating, floating iPhones. So what we can do is we can click on the device, and we can move the device, align it to the plane, and uh, this simply moves it to be basically on the floor. And I think um, let's revert it back by pressing Control Z and it basically undoes our previous actions and moves the device back. Okay, um, 
so when adding the plane, uh, we can also customize its height. So instead of the plane being up high, we can create make it to be just above the device and also add the blur and change its opacity to not be so visible. Okay, so now it looks like the iPhones are playing in space and they have more, um, more of a 3D feel. Um, we can see that the plane kind of disappears, so I will uh, fix this by extending the text layer. So for example, you can see that the, the plane, the shadows just disappeared in, at the end. So I will go to the plane layer and also extend it to stay until the end. Press spacebar to play the animation. We can see, as we'd expect, the plane is now um, constant throughout the animation or exists throughout the animation. Let's go down to the bottom where we have our devices. Uh, for each device, you can control its position, rotation, and scale. Um, each element is present on the timeline, and you can customize each element by expanding it and um, customizing it. So let's go to the device three. Device three should be the middle device. Uh, let's. It's somewhere at the bottom. Now it's appearing and um, and the animation is being played. How the movement is controlled? Well, it's controlled by these checkpoints. And uh, we can see that at one second, we have a specific position of the device. And then at another point, uh, the position changes. Let's say we want to add another checkpoint. To do this, we simply drag the timeline where we want our next checkpoint to be. And let's say we want our device to move down slightly. So it goes down here, back here, and we see that the checkpoint has been added and it looks like the following. So it pops up. This is where we've added the checkpoint and we can see it's moving down. Okay, this um, process can be done for the rotation, uh, scaling, and other different effects that you might want to ease or extrapolate and add motion to. Um, I've already covered the text that you can change, again, um, by sliding the element and um, you, you can control the duration and when it appears. And um, finally, the export, which is the most important button of all, allows you to export your mockup. And there's three formats currently provided, which are PNG, just takes a shot of what is currently on the canvas. So if you might want to have a, a still mockup uh, that looks like this, uh, which is the final frame of the animation. Um, basically, you can frame and create mockups out of your animation at any point in time uh, or just create a still mockup. Um, MP4 is fast rendering of the animation in MP4 format and WebM is a video format that supports transparency. So if you want to embed the video on the website and you want to have a transparent background, for example, I click the solid, let's make it uh, black, but then I click on the alpha layer and change it to zero. This video will be transparent. And in order to export it with transparency, you need to select the appropriate format, which is WebM. Hopefully this covers everything inside the 3D editor. If you do have any questions or you want me to cover something else in more detail, do let me know or feel free to ask any questions in the comments and I will reply. Thank you for watching. Hopefully it was useful.